Welcome. This is Pastor Nick Bueller at Rainier Assembly of God. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday night class podcast on life in the spirit. Studies in the Spirit-Filled Walk. We're going through Dr. Denzel Miller's book entitled In Step with the Spirit and his lecture notes, Life in the Spirit. This is Lesson 15, Ministering in Spiritual Power. Here's some recommended study Bibles. And first I'm going to just read three paragraphs from the book of this chapter. Central to the worldview of the traditional African is the concept of power. It is the witch doctor's stock and trade. To the African, the word medicine translates power. Medicine is the potion or charm that gives a man power over his adversary or lover or sickness or you name it. Therefore, when ministering in the African context, the preacher who does not evidence spiritual power in his ministry has little impact on his audience. That is why it is so essential that anyone going to Africa to minister go in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Western Church is fast learning that what is true for Africa is also true in the West. Postmodern man is looking for a religion of more than words or abstract concepts. He is looking for a religion that will address the pressing needs of his life, and that has the power to meet those needs. Sure, he is interested in the issues of eternity, but his primary concern is here and now. That is why any minister who expects to truly impact postmodern America must be empowered by the Holy Spirit. In this chapter, we will discuss how the Holy Spirit helps us to minister with spiritual power. We will begin our discussion of power ministry with an extended definition, and we will talk about why power ministry is needed in the world today. And finally, we will offer some suggestions as to how one may actually do power ministry. As you notice here, we have a traditional picture of a witch doctor, and then we also have some superheroes. And, uh, you know, have you noticed that the American society right now and uh, Western culture is obsessed at times with superheroes? And I think a lot of it has to do was that in their own life, in our own life, we feel like we are helpless, helpless to overcome. And I think America and the rest of the world and the Western world, because of their postmodern mind frame, they are ripe for power ministry, ministering in spiritual power. So our first point is this, power ministry defined. Let's begin our discussion of power ministry with a definition. Power ministry can be defined in three ways. First is this, is ministry with a powerful plus. It is ministry plus power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus ministered in this way. He performed miracles and preaching and teaching. Note that uh, there was power for the miracle, and then there was also power for the preaching and teaching, and that's the way it should be. But the end results according to uh, the Bible, was multitudes, multitudes. We're going to look at Acts 10.38 here because that's kind of a, just a um, touchstone of this whole chapter. The early church followed Jesus' example in Acts 43, and it brings up two important concepts, power encounter, the power encounter. Uh, and the truth encounter, the truth encounter, power encounter and truth encounter. This is probably best illustrated in when Jesus was calling Peter to be one of his disciples. And he, he yelled out from the shore, and after he had just got done preaching, and, and Peter and, and his other fellow workers were washing their nets out, cleaning their nets, and he said, push out, out into the Sea of Galilee, and let's catch some fish. And Peter said, "Ah, uh, you know, I, I, we fished all night long. We, the professional fishermen, have fished all night long." 
And Jesus told them, said, well, why don't you cast the net on the other side of the boat? And so they cast the net, and all of a sudden, it was full of fish. And notice, there was a power encounter. There was a miracle. Jesus, uh, Peter realized that he was dealing with somebody else than just a mere human. And as, after they pulled the net up, it was so full, it was about ready to rip uh, the net and he turns to Jesus and bows down before him, and he said, go away from me. I'm a sinful man. And Jesus said, don't have any fear. Don't be afraid, because I am going to make you fishers of men. This is repeated over and over in the Bible, even with um, Elijah and his confrontation with the, with the prophets of Baal and uh, the priests of Baal. Uh, they had this big contest on Mount Carmel all day long, and uh, uh, the, the 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 prophets of Baal, you know, they were cutting themselves. They were trying to get fire to fall down on the sacrifice. And then when Elijah came up, he he prayed a simple prayer. But first, he, the truth encounter. He said, "Choose who you're going to serve this day. Who is Lord? Is is Baal Lord?" Or is Yahweh, is Jehovah Lord? And as soon as he prayed that simple prayer, all of a sudden fire came down and consumed the sacrifice and all the water around. And after that, the people said, Jehovah is Lord. God is Lord. Yahweh is Lord. He is Lord. That is the concept, the two important concepts, the power encounter and the truth encounter. And I believe that both need to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 38, when Peter was preaching in Cornelius' house and he was giving a, a synopsis of Jesus' ministry, and he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the power with the Holy Spirit. Notice, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all those who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. The second point of this definition of power ministry is ministry with a biblical precedent. This was the pattern that was set up by Jesus. And Jesus, he appointed and taught his disciples to do the same. Mark 3, 13 through 19, Luke 9, 1 through 2, Luke 10, 1 through 2, and 9. And in the early church, after Pentecost, because remember that Jesus told them, said, don't leave Jerusalem until you've been endued with power from on high. And after Pentecost, Jesus set up the pattern. The disciples, the apostles already knew what the pattern was. And the apostles and the New Testament believers they followed. Acts 2, 41, 43, and 47. And what happened? There was great results. We saw uh, altar calls of 3,000 people or, and more. Uh, you know, great. Thousands of people came. What, I mean, what, what a tremendous thing. You know, we think it's a, a great deal when we do a service and and 10 people respond to the altar call, or one, or two, or three. But with this kind of ministry, there is the potential for thousands to respond. And I believe in these last days, there might be even greater harvest than thousands. The ministry uh, with a mighty potential. Three things under this point is potential for bringing great blessing to the church. When there are miracles, when there is the truth encounter and the power encounter within a church, it brings great blessings to the church. The church is more vibrant, more functional. But it's also a potential for church planting and growth. Um, there is a way, like in third world countries, the, the old formula used to be, that they would set up a tent, and um, and even in the early days here in the United States, in the early days of Pentecost, um, uh, Amy Simple McPherson and um, several other evangelists that went out, and uh, they would do tent revivals, and uh, 
many times what happened is the churches were started because there was this tremendous move of the Holy Spirit. People would come. They would have a, a truth encounter through the preaching and the miracles that would happen as people were, were healed and delivered. And then when they got ready to leave town, then they, they you know, left behind a church or more churches. Um, I used to have a lady, Dorothy Lelishur, that was in our church, and she's gone on to be with the Lord, a great saint. But she remembers how that she got saved uh, back in the Dakotas, and she said there was a, a, a woman who came with an apostolic anointing, a Pentecostal preacher, and she came in and she uh, held a revival, and um, then pretty soon the, the, the tent revival there moved into a storefront, and she taught the people. And then as she was getting to, to leave, uh, go to the next town or, or the next place the Holy Spirit was calling, she said, I'm going to appoint Brother So-and-So to be the, the pastor, and, and she appointed every position in the church. Uh, these folks are going to be on the board. These folks are going to do teach Sunday school. And these people um, are going to be ushers. And these, this, these, are, these are the people that are going to be your mu musicians and song leaders. And then she left town. And she left behind a functioning church. And that's the way that uh, power ministry works. It worked in this country. And it can work again. The potential for evangelizing resistant people groups in the 1040 window where there is a lot of resistance and uh, even it's illegal to preach the gospel. Um, supernatural things and power ministry and power encounter and a truth encounter breaks down the barriers that people might have to receiving the Christ, to receiving Christ. The second point is this, is the need for spiritual power. There are many reasons why the church is to be involved in power ministry today. Let's talk about three of these. First point is this, letter A, because of the need around us. We need the Spirit's power manifested in our ministries because of the many needs of the people around us. Um, we live in a, in a time of a great need. Notice that Jesus kind of had three steps. And this is found in Matthew, the last part of Matthew 9, 35, all the way through um, the end of chapter 10 of Matthew. But you see three things that Jesus did. First, he looked out there and he saw the fields were white unto harvest. And he said, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send laborers under the harvest field. And then in, in chapter 10, verse 1, he took his disciples and he gave them authority. And this is similar to us. as like, uh, don't leave Jerusalem until you receive the gift of the Father that was promised to me, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Our authority comes when, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the third thing he did was he sent them to preach the kingdom and heal the sick. Talk about being thrown into the deep end of the pool. They knew very little at this moment. And uh, they hadn't been to Bible school. They, they hadn't been to Sunday school. Uh, they hadn't done all these traditional things that we think people need to do. But Jesus told them to pray for laborers, and then he gave them authority, and then he sent them out to preach about the kingdom and then to heal the sick. Why do we need this? Because there's a lot of hurts. In Africa, there are uh, a lot of people that a scourge of AIDS going on and leaving tremendous amount of of orphans. Right now we are dealing with a virus that is that has got us all under home quarantine. And there's a lot of people that are demonized, messing around with the occult. Um, in the music, there's occultic things in music, there's occultic thing in movies, 
in games, and people are opening themselves up to uh, demonic influence, demonic possession, because they're looking for some power in their lives, and they're looking in the wrong way. And then we have broken homes, divorce, drugs, alcohol, uh, dysfunctional parents, kids are growing up with, in, in a lot of, in situations that are just absolutely horrible. Broken homes and broken lives. Uh, I remember somebody telling me a story about when they were nine years old, they would, uh, after her mom and boyfriend would, you know, went out partying and they got, they were sick, um, throwing up all over themselves. She, at nine years old, had to clean them up and take care of them. Acting, there's a lot of children acting as adults, and it's, it, 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 it creates a lot of broken lives and a broken cycle. We need this powerful, the Spirit's powerful manifestation in ministry because of the many needs around us. The second point, letter B, is this because of the enemy opposing us. Satan has power. He has real power. But here's the good news. Jesus has given us power over him. He has given us authority. Luke 10, 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Letter C, the third point, is because of the challenge facing us. It is an enormous challenge to evangelize the world. Uh, Jesus has given us that command. And, and, but, uh, so we can't do it in our own strength, but we need the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why it was, it was given to us. Here, and the second point is this under this is Jesus is coming soon. And this should really hit home at this point. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Jesus is coming again. According to Acts 1.8, only through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus has promised us all the power we need to get the job done. You shall, you shall receive power, dude with power on high, and then you will be witnesses to, to uh, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the outer parts of the world. Third point is how to minister in power. The question now arises, what must we do to be able to minister in the power and the anointing of the Spirit? There are at least three things we must do if we are to be able to have such a ministry. Letter A is acknowledge our needs. Paul asked this question in 2 Corinthians 2.16. Who is equal to such a task? And then he answered himself in uh, the next chapter, right at the beginning, verses 5 and 6 of chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians, not that we are competent in ourselves. We're, we are not very competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves. But our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of, the new, of a new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills but the Spirit gives life. When we minister in the Spirit, we give life. But when we try to minister without the Spirit, it's the letter of the law, and it just, it, it condemns people. It doesn't convict people. It makes people feel guilty, not convicted. And their motivation to change is based on their own willpower, if we do the letter of the law, if the letter kills. But if we preach under the anointing of the Spirit, they come, are forgiven of their sins, and delivered of, of all the things that encumbers them and have enslaved them, and the Spirit gives them life, and they live a victorious life by the power of the Holy Spirit and not on their willpower. Appropriate the Spirit's help. 
Letter B, appropriate the Spirit's help. How do we do this? How do we appropriate the Spirit's help? We do this by being filled with the Spirit like Jesus. Luke 4, 18 and 19. And it is his clear plan for us today. Luke 24, 49 and Acts 1, 8. Further, appropriate the Spirit's aid by walking in humble submission to and in constant communion with. Covet the Spirit's gift, 1 Corinthians 12, 31 and 14, 1, and be ready to respond to his direction and inner promptings. One of the things that uh, I do before I preach, before I minister, is I humble myself before God. I say, Lord, I need your help. Maybe even get down on my knees and, and pray. And, uh, and then I get up and uh, then I resist the devil. And the, the word says that we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Only then we will be able to minister in the Spirit's power. I remember as a young preacher, I remember listening as a young youth pastor to Rich Wilkerson and going to a conference that he was doing. And at this conference, he, he was talking. He, he emphasized us as he was uh, teaching an intern how to preach. And uh, in, he emphasized before you can go out there and before you can preach, you have to get on your face before God and be filled with the Spirit and ask him for your help. Resist the devil and submit yourself and and be and be in communion with the Spirit. You can't go out and and uh, live a live a life, a worldly life, and expect the Spirit's power to come upon you. You can't uh, be unsubmitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and and expect to have the power of the Spirit. You'll be like Samson who. Um, uh, after his locks were cut and, um, and uh, Bathsheba, excuse me, Delilah, said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And he jumped up and he was ready to fight the Philistines like he did before. And the word of God says that he didn't even know the spirit of God had departed from him. Sometimes we can minister in our own strength, but if we don't appropriate the Spirit's help, sooner or later, the tank's going to run dry, and we're going to jump up to fight the enemy and not even notice that the Spirit has left us. Act in faith and boldness, letter C. Finally, if we are to have an effective power ministry, according to Denzel Miller, we must learn to act in faith and boldness. As we discussed in the last lesson, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is appropriated through obedience and released through faith. Only those who are ready to act in bold faith will ever see signs and wonders accomplished in their ministries. In conclusion, the needs around us are many. People are suffering, suffering and crying out for help. The task of the world, evangelism, is great. How can we meet these challenges? We will successfully meet them only in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We must boldly preach Christ and expect supernatural signs to follow our ministry. Thank you for joining us tonight. And um, just close with this. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? So let's pray as we end this time. Father God, we just ask that you would help us. Lord, we live in a very challenging time, and we need the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. And we just ask for your anointing, Holy Spirit, come upon us. Fill us anew and afresh. And Lord, I ask you, give us a Holy Ghost boldness. Give us a backbone like a crowbar that we might be able to stand up against the wiles of the enemy. And, Lord, that we would preach the truth, O oh God, 
and perform the miracles that you lay out in front of us by your power, by your anointing, O oh God, that we too, like Jesus, like you did, Jesus, heal those who are under the power of the enemy. And Lord, we just ask for your help. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining us tonight. And um, have a blessed night. Uh, for further information, go to the website, rainierag.org.